We take this time apart to listen, to learn and reflect with prayer and praise. Draw near to our God and offer this time of worship with all your hearts and minds. Let us worship God. One day, Jesus and his followers went to a town called Capernaum. When the Sabbath came, Jesus went straight to the synagogue and started teaching. People were astonished by the way he spoke. Unlike the other teachers, he taught them with authority. They listened carefully and wanted to hear more. Suddenly, a man in the synagogue filled with an unclean spirit shouted out angrily, What do you want of us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. The crowd was shocked, but Jesus didn't stop. Straight away he turned to the man, Be quiet and get out of him, he commanded. The man fell to the floor with a huge cry, and the unclean spirit was gone. Everybody was amazed. They turned to each other excitedly and said, What is this? He teaches us in a new way with authority. And from then on, everyone wanted to know about Jesus. Let's pray. God, you're amazing, wonderful and wise. We are your children and long to know you better. Thank you for Jesus. He helps us to know you. 
and he shows us that we need to love each other and you with all our heart. We want to be more like Jesus, to love everyone the same, to help those who are in need and to share what we know with others. Thank you for listening to our prayer. In Jesus' name, he taught us to say, Our Our Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hello, and welcome to our service today. Whether you're a member of Second Battle Easton or an online visitor, we are incredibly pleased to have you as part of our online community. Services will continue to be online during February. Please let us know of anyone who cannot access the internet, but would like a CD or DVD copy of Morning Worship. In the weeks ahead, we will be sharing more all-age resources to help you stay connected with your congregation and encourage each of us in our Christian discipleship as we prepare for Easter. Please sign up on our website to make sure you get all the latest news. Psalm 111 Praise the Lord! I will extol the Lord with all my heart, in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord, they are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of the universe, powerful and wise beyond our understanding, we are gathered to offer our praise and to remember your wondrous deeds since time began till now. We gather here in the name of your Son, the one who called us by name and invited us into a relationship with you an invitation that came with authority and demands a response from each one of us. We are continually surprised by Jesus, and how he reveals more of you and helps us to know you and trust you more each day. We wonder at the authority shown in the Gospels by Jesus, an authority that does not seek power for power's sake, nor does he use authority to serve himself. Instead, Jesus uses his authority to help others, to heal, to teach, to encourage, to invite and include. Lord, forgive us both individually and as part of the body of Christ when we have used the authority given to us to take rather than give, to abuse rather than serve. Lord, remind us that we are but a tiny part of creation, that we are to seek justice and offer mercy and grace to all people. May we seek to always serve rather than be served and proclaim your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from Mark's Gospel. Jesus drives out an impure spirit. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed they asked each other, What is this, a new teaching, and with authority? He even gives orders to the impure spirit, and they obeyed him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee.
Thanks be to God. Most junk mail that lands in my inbox is routinely ignored, but this one caught my eye with its title, Vaccines to All Church Leaders. It was spam from a fundamentalist Christian group who are spreading misinformation about COVID vaccines, a harmful effort that you might have seen also on Facebook or Twitter. Groups like this claim everything from vaccines being ineffective to vaccines being part of a global conspiracy to track you with a microchip which is ironic given that they use computers to spread their dangerous lies. It's hard to believe that there are people actively undermining attempts to save people's lives. But the reason for conspiracy theories are complex, rooted in paranoia, prejudice and insecurity. At their worst, they have been used for some of the evilest actions ever, as Holocaust Memorial Day this week reminded us. When conspiracy theories were used to justify the murder of six million Jews, alongside the millions of other people killed under Nazi persecution and in genocides that followed in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. It is a horror of human history that faced with the choice to do good, there are those who choose evil and believe anything in order to justify themselves. Our Gospel story today is a story of hope being met with resistance. Jesus comes to the synagogue and begins to teach, amazing those present with his authority. Suddenly, a man screams out, described as being possessed by an unclean spirit, interrupting those listening. This is not an ancient story about mental health. Mark, the writer of the Gospel, wants us to know that when good news is proclaimed, there will be opposition. Following on from Satan's tempting in the wilderness, which Jesus overcomes, here the man with the unclean spirit stands as another example of demonic opposition to God's kingdom. He is someone trapped by evil, Yet once again the authority of Jesus cannot be overcome. 
Satan's power is being broken up as the Lord comes to redeem God's people. It is a reminder for Christians in every age that faithful service will encounter evil, but Jesus is the Holy One of God and sets us free from anything that would diminish us as God's children. Listen to him. Christ's authority was not demonstrated by political power or wealth or fame, but by his death and resurrection. Love in action. Listen to him. As we confront the evils of our age, there will be unclean spirits that seek only harm rather than healing. The conspiracy theories rampant on social media, a culture obsessed with image rather than substance, a politics of false promises, or the underlying selfishness that reduces our capacity for everyone to flourish. We need to listen to Jesus. The world and its problems feel so overwhelming right now. A pandemic, global poverty, climate change. What can you do? As the preacher David Lowe's points out, the world wasn't changed after just one man was healed, but the world was changed for that one man. One simple act of healing stands as a witness to an entire community. You don't attempt to change everything. You just change what you can, and by God's grace, that is a witness to others. Be encouraged that you are part of a fellowship listening to Jesus, the legacy of all those who have been faithful to Jesus in every age. Today at home, parents are teaching their kids a Bible story about Jesus to gift them a vision of a world bigger than themselves. Others are praying for those ill or anxious and taking the time to phone. Others are giving what they can in the knowledge that God can use all that we have. Others are making friends and welcoming newcomers. Others are helping those in need because they are grateful for the generosity God has shown them. Others are slow to judge because experiences taught them the mercy of God. Even those taking part in our service today, sharing in worship, calling each of us to listen to Jesus. Not much on their own, but by God's grace, we are all changing the world together. In such difficult times, we are grateful for those who contribute their offering through a standing order with their bank. Others give faithfully week by week. Right now you can text BALLY, followed by an amount, to 785. Each text costs the amount, plus one standard rate message. You can also donate online at www.ballyeaston.org. Let us pray. Healing God, our world needs your gentle healing touch today. As COVID-19 continues to spread and cause chaos for billions of people, we need your gentle healing touch. For all who are trying to develop a vaccine, for all who serve on the frontline medical services, for all who are helping our young people to stay in education, for all who are delivering to the isolated, for all who are working to keep the peace, for all who are putting themselves at risk to help others, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. As wars and threats of violence continue to rage in many places today, we need your gentle healing touch. For all who have been taken from their families and forced to take up arms, for all who have been at war for longer than they have been alive and for whom peace seems impossible, for all who continue to profit from warmongering and who endanger others' lives, for all who abuse their authority or use it for personal gain, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our brothers and sisters suffer from all manners of illnesses and anxieties, we need your gentle healing touch. For all who are unable to access health care, for all who have had to wait for investigations or treatments, for all who have, had, have been isolated from loved ones, for all who have faced death alone, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment's silence, we name those people and situations known to us where your gentle healing touch is needed today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for listening to our prayers. O Lord, give us patience to wait for answers and courage to be the answer where we can. In the name of Christ, our healer and saviour, we pray. Amen.
today we have listened, and now we go to act. We go to listen to others. We go to love others. We go to be a blessing to others. And we do all these things by the authority of Jesus. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each one of you, now and always. And all God's people said, Amen.